In our lives, we often encounter individuals whose influence is subtly corrosive, eroding our peace and undermining our self-esteem. Have you ever felt inexplicably drained after interactions with someone who seemed charming at first? This dissonance might signify the presence of a covert narcissist, a person adept at manipulation to serve their ego, often at the expense of others. How can we, as a community committed to growth and mutual support, effectively shield ourselves and foster a healthier environment. Drawing upon the timeless wisdom of Stoicism, we find a powerful alternative to the emotional turmoil induced by such interactions. Marcus Aurelius, a sage of ancient times, once advised, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Stoicism teaches us to focus on our inner responses, granting us the resilience to not only withstand the narcissist's subterfuges, but to thrive despite them. As we delve into the eight Stoic strategies designed to instill fear, or at the very least, respect in the narcissist, let us ask ourselves, what values are we willing to stand for? How can our personal growth contribute to the well-being of our community? I challenge you to engage deeply with these strategies. Reflect on each one as a step towards personal empowerment and a testament to our collective resolve. Stay tuned and watch this video until the end, joining us on a journey to uncover profound Stoic lessons for a life of purpose and clarity. Let us begin this exploration together. Armed with the courage to face our challenges, the wisdom to recognize our true needs, and the peace that comes from understanding our rightful place in the world. Strategy number one, don't take responsibility for their emotions. In the Stoic philosophy, Epictetus once said, we are disturbed not by what happens to us, but by our thoughts about what happens. This fundamental principle underlines our first strategy against the covert narcissist, not taking responsibility for their emotions. Stoicism teaches us the importance of differentiating between what is within our control and what isn't. The emotions of others and especially those of a narcissist, fall squarely outside our realm of control. Why then do we often find ourselves burdened by the emotional weight of those incapable of empathy? It's a question that not only invites introspection, but also encourages a stoic detachment. Consider this. When a narcissist attempts to manipulate you with guilt, anger at or disappointment, they're engaging in a form of emotional tyranny. How can you apply the stoic discipline of indifference to remain unaffected by these attempts? An illustrative example comes from Marcus Aurelius, who advised, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. When a narcissist tries to offload their emotional turmoil onto you, remember that your internal fortress is impregnable. By not accepting responsibility for their emotional state, you disarm their manipulation. The act of not taking responsibility for a narcissist's emotions isn't about neglect, but about maintaining a healthy boundary between what you can change, your reactions and emotions, and what you cannot, the emotions of others. This distinction is crucial in dealing with narcissists, who often expect others to cater to their emotional needs. How might shifting the responsibility back to the narcissist affect their behavior towards you? 
Can recognizing the limits of your control empower you to maintain composure in the face of emotional manipulation? By adopting this stoic strategy, we not only protect our peace, but also subtly signal to the narcissist that their emotional games hold no power over us. This realization can indeed instill a sense of fear in them as it upends the control they seek to have over our emotional state. Strategy number two, expose deception calmly. In navigating the treacherous waters of interaction with a covert narcissist, one of the most powerful tools at our disposal is the Stoic practice of calm exposure of falsehoods. The Stoics, like Zeno, taught that the wise man is as impassive to the misdeeds of others as he is to the elements of nature. This detachment is not born of indifference, but of a profound understanding of human frailty. The challenge here is multifaceted. How do you confront someone who thrives on distortion without becoming entangled in their web of lies? What does it look like in practice to remain detached yet engaged enough to expose dishonesty? Picture a scenario where a narcissist spreads a rumor to undermine a colleague. Instead of reacting with visible upset, a stoic approach would involve gathering clear, undeniable evidence to the contrary and presenting it in a forum where both facts and tone speak for themselves. This method contrasts sharply with direct confrontation. It involves letting the truth manifest through clarity and proof rather than through force of argument or emotional intensity. The teachings of Epictetus are particularly relevant here. He argued that it's not events themselves that disturb people, but their judgments about them. Applying this to the task of exposing a narcissist's deceit, one should focus on the act of clarification rather than confrontation. Think of it as realigning a skewed picture rather than smashing it to pieces, correcting the narrative so that the truth stands clear and undeniable. This stoic method has a dual effect. It not only preserves your peace of mind, but also significantly disorients the narcissist. They thrive on the emotional reactions of others and your calm dismantling of their falsehoods deprives them of this fuel. In many cases, this can lead them to reassess their strategies, or at least hesitate before spinning further tales. As we wrap up this exploration of calmly exposing deception, I invite you to reflect on and share your experiences. Have you ever had to expose someone's deception what strategies did you use and what was the outcome? How did you maintain your composure during such times? Your stories and insights are invaluable as we navigate these complex interactions together. Strategy number three, call them by their name. In Stoic philosophy, much emphasis is placed on the power of rational discourse and the importance of addressing things according to their true nature. Epictetus, a revered Stoic philosopher, urged, everything has two handles, the one by which it can be carried, the other by which it cannot. If your brother acts unjustly, don't lay hold of the matter by the handle of his injustice, for by that it cannot be carried but by the opposite, that he is your brother, that he was brought up with you, and thus you will lay hold of it as it is bearable. When dealing with a covert narcissist, calling them by their name, figuratively speaking, serves a similar purpose. It's about recognizing their behavior for what it is and addressing them directly and personally in a manner that is truthful 
and unyielding. When you call a narcissist by their name, you are not just using their personal name, but also calling attention to their actions and behaviors directly. This tactic cuts through the usual masks and performances that narcissists use to manipulate or control situations. So then, how does this strategy embody Stoic principles? Stoicism teaches us to look beyond the surface and address the essence of a person or a situation. By calling a narcissist out on their behavior specifically and consistently, you employ a kind of moral clarity that is deeply rooted in Stoic ethics. This clarity forces the narcissist to confront the reality of their actions, potentially disrupting their typical patterns and manipulations. For instance, imagine a scenario where a narcissist is subtly undermining a colleague in a team meeting. Instead of reacting to the emotional undertone, the stoic response would be to calmly and clearly state, I noticed you've expressed several doubts about John's recent project. Can you clarify what specifically you believe is lacking? This approach not only brings the issue into the open, but also signals to the narcissist that their tactics are recognized and will be challenged openly. Dear my friend, using this direct approach regularly could modify the dynamics within your interactions. It might encourage honesty and reduce the effectiveness of manipulation tactics typically employed by narcissists. Over time, this could lead to a shift in behavior, or at least a reduction in the impact of their actions on you and others around you. Coming to the next strategy in scaring the narcissist. In the pursuit of handling interactions with a covert narcissist effectively, the Stoic philosophy offers a compelling strategy. Strategy number four, seek truth over sentiment. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once noted, reject your sense of injury and the injury itself disappears. This maxim underscores the importance of focusing on objective truth rather than the emotional responses that can cloud judgment. Why is prioritizing truth over sentiment effective in dealing with narcissists? Narcissists often exploit emotional reactions to manipulate others. By emphasizing truth and objectivity, you prevent them from using your emotions as leverage. It's essential to ask, how can focusing on factual accuracy rather than emotional responses change the dynamics of your interactions with a narcissist. Stoicism teaches the separation of emotions from logical reasoning, promoting a life guided by wisdom and rational thought. Seneca, another Stoic philosopher, advised, if you wish to be loved, love. In the context of dealing with narcissists, this might seem counterintuitive but it emphasizes the importance of acting based on principles and reason rather than emotional impulses. For example, if a narcissist tries to provoke you by questioning your abilities instead of reacting defensively, which could escalate the situation and play into their hands, a stoic response would involve calmly presenting facts about your achievements and qualifications that disprove their assertions. This approach not only maintains your composure, but also firmly roots the conversation in reality, where subjective criticisms hold less sway. More importantly, by consistently choosing truth over sentiment, you set a standard for interactions that discourage manipulative behaviors. This strategy fosters an environment where emotional manipulation is less effective and honest straightforward communication is valued. As we reflect on this approach, I invite you to consider your experiences. 
Have you ever had to consciously put aside your feelings to focus on the truth? What was the situation and what were the outcomes? How did prioritizing factual understanding over emotional reaction help you navigate the challenge? This strategy not only equips you to deal with narcissists effectively, but also enhances your personal growth by fostering resilience and emotional intelligence. Strategy number five, remember your worth. In the philosophical school of Stoicism, recognizing and valuing one's own worth is crucial, especially in the face of those who seek to manipulate or undermine us, such as covert narcissists. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, once noted, that understanding one's direction in life makes every wind favorable. This metaphor speaks volumes about the power of self-awareness, which acts as a compass through life's tumultuous interactions. When we encounter individuals who use narcissistic tactics, they often aim to shake our confidence and devalue our contributions. They thrive in environments where individuals doubt their worth because it makes manipulation easier and more effective. However, by affirming our value and capabilities, we construct a mental fortress that resists such assaults. Imagine standing firm in a professional setting where a narcissist attempts to belittle your achievements. If you hold a strong, internalized belief in your own worth, their words will likely have little impact. Instead of reacting defensively, you might respond with a poised recount of your accomplishments or simply continue to demonstrate your competence through your actions. This self-assurance is rooted deeply in Stoic teachings that emphasize focusing on what is within our control, our responses, and our beliefs about ourselves. Epictetus highlighted that external events can't harm us. Only our responses to them can. Thus, maintaining a clear perception of our intrinsic value is not just a shield, but also a source of empowerment. To enhance this sense of self-worth, engaging in regular self-reflection can be incredibly beneficial. Reflecting on daily actions that align with our values, noting down instances where we have upheld our integrity, and seeking constructive feedback from trusted peers or mentors help solidify our understanding of our own value these practices ensure that our self-perception is both accurate and resilient, enabling us to navigate interactions with narcissists with a balanced and confident mindset. Marcus Aurelius, a proponent of living in harmony with oneself, believed that such internal harmony reflected outward, creating a more respectful and healthy interpersonal environment. By focusing on our virtues and strengths, we not only protect ourselves from negativity, but also contribute to creating relationships based on respect and mutual appreciation. It allows us to remain resilient in the face of criticism or manipulation, ensuring that we live not at the mercy of others' opinions but in alignment with our true selves. Strategy number six, disengage when attacked. Have you ever found yourself cornered by someone's harsh words or manipulative tactics, feeling the urge to retaliate? Stoic philosophy offers a powerful alternative, disengage when attacked. This strategy is not about surrender or weakness. It's about choosing battles wisely and preserving your inner peace. 
The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This sentiment is crucial when dealing with narcissists, who often provoke reactions to assert control. By choosing to disengage, you deny them this power, turning their strategy on its head. Imagine you're in a heated meeting and a known narcissist begins to criticize your project unfairly. Instead of responding in anger, you take a deep breath, acknowledge their opinion, and suggest revisiting the discussion at another time with more data. This response not only preserves the dignity of the interaction, but also keeps the emotional climate under your control. Why is it effective to disengage? It allows you to step back and assess the situation from a position of strength rather than impulse. How can this strategy impact your relationships and peace of mind if practiced consistently? By removing yourself from toxic dynamics, you cultivate an environment where constructive interactions are possible reducing stress and enhancing your decision-making capabilities. Seneca, another esteemed Stoic, offered advice that resonates with this approach. The greatest remedy for anger is delay. In practice, this might look like taking a moment to collect your thoughts, excusing yourself from a conversation, or choosing not to respond to a provocative message immediately. The real-life application of this strategy can be as simple as pausing before responding to an email. That has upset you, giving yourself time to formulate a calm, collected response. As we reflect on the value of disengaging, I encourage you to experiment with this strategy in your own life. What situations might benefit from a moment of pause? How might your interactions change if you consistently applied this Stoic principle? In embracing this Stoic wisdom, we learn that the true art of living well doesn't come from trying to control every situation, but from mastering the art of withdrawal when faced with adversity. As we face the challenges presented by covert narcissists, let us find strength in our ability to step back, peace in our acceptance of what we cannot change, and success in our strategic disengagement. As Emperor Marcus Aurelius once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This stoic disengagement is a powerful strategy to unsettle and deter narcissistic behavior, preserving our tranquility and respect for ourselves. Strategy number seven, stick to the subject. Have you ever found yourself lost in a maze of conversation, only to realize you've strayed far from the original topic? This common frustration can be especially manipulative when a covert narcissist is steering the dialogue, often leading us into emotional or irrelevant territory to gain the upper hand. In such moments, how can we reclaim the reins and guide the discussion back to productive grounds? Stoic philosophy offers a powerful tool in this regard, the discipline to stick to the subject. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic emperor and philosopher, once remarked, confine yourself to the present. Applying this wisdom, we learn to focus on the matter at hand, avoiding distractions and manipulations that can derail our conversations and intentions. Consider a workplace scenario where discussions with a narcissistic colleague veer off into personal criticisms or past issues rather than the project goals. By consistently redirecting the focus to the original agenda. 
Let's return to discussing the project milestones we need to achieve. You exemplify stoic resilience and maintain control over the conversation's direction. Why is this practice transformative? By staying on topic, you not only protect yourself from the chaos of unrelated arguments, but also foster a culture of focused, meaningful dialogue in your community. This focus can significantly enhance your professional and personal relationships, fostering an environment where communication is clear and productive. Additionally, it bolsters collective productivity and mutual understanding, ensuring that every discussion is an opportunity for true progress and connection. Let's embrace this stoic strategy in our daily interactions. By doing so, we cultivate a community where clarity and purpose drive our conversations, paving the way for a more peaceful, productive and successful life. Engage with this approach and observe how it changes the dynamics of your interactions. Are you ready to focus on what truly matters and encourage those around you to do the same? Strategy number eight, maintain boundaries firmly. Maintaining firm boundaries is a pivotal stoic strategy to counteract the influence of a covert narcissist. In the wisdom of Stoicism, clear personal boundaries are akin to the walls of a fortress. They protect our rational mind from external turmoil. Epictetus once said, make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as it happens. This philosophy teaches us to control our personal space and interactions, ensuring that we dictate the terms of our engagement with others. Imagine you are in a relationship where your partner repeatedly undermines your decisions. By setting a firm boundary, perhaps stating clearly that decisions affecting both of you should be made together, you uphold your self-respect and deny the narcissists the chaos they thrive on. Another example might be at work, where a narcissistic colleague constantly seeks to overstep your professional boundaries. A firm response, such as, I appreciate your interest, but I will handle this task as agreed with our manager, reaffirms your professional limits and communicates that their intrusive behavior is unacceptable. These examples highlight how crucial it is to establish and enforce our boundaries. Firm boundaries not only keep narcissistic tendencies at bay, but also cultivate a space where our virtues and tranquility can flourish. By doing so, we create environments where mutual respect and personal growth are possible. In adopting this strategy, reflect on the areas of your life where boundaries could be strengthened. Ask yourself, what limits need reinforcement to ensure my peace and success? Embrace this stoic practice and you will find that with strong boundaries comes a profound sense of control and dignity in your interactions. Let this stoic wisdom guide you. Establish your boundaries with the clarity and firmness of a philosopher king, ensuring a life marked by peace, happiness and success. As you apply these principles, consider the freedom and strength that come from knowing you can protect your space and well-being from any external turmoil. We have reached the finish line after passing eight milestones on our journey of stoic self-discovery today. In our exploration of the eight stoic strategies to disarm the covert narcissist, we've learned the importance of self-control, clarity and resilience. From not taking responsibility for their emotions to maintaining firm boundaries, 
Each strategy is a step towards reclaiming our peace and asserting our worth in the face of manipulation. Stoicism teaches us to focus on our reactions, to maintain our composure, and to approach each situation with a grounded sense of purpose. Seneca's words resonate deeply here. Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant, reminding us that embracing these strategies willingly transforms our encounters and our lives. I urge you to apply these stoic principles, not just as tactics, but as part of a greater journey towards a peaceful, happy and dignified life. Let this wisdom shield you and guide you in all interactions, ensuring that you live not at the mercy of others, but with the freedom and strength of your own convictions. If you feel the messages in this conversation are valuable and insightful, please express your feelings by clicking like and sharing your thoughts in the comments section. Spreading these lessons is of great significance, so don't hesitate to share them with the community around you. If you are not yet part of this community, don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any valuable lessons from Stoicism. We always appreciate and wait for your participation in the next videos.